Hey guys and welcome! Since my last tips and tricks video for Battlefield 2042 received a really good feedback, I thought I'd show you some more things that the game doesn't tell you. Let's start with the fire mode. For a lot of weapons in Battlefield 2042, you can switch the fire mode between automatic, burst and single fire. Sometimes you have all three options available and sometimes only two of them. To change the fire mode, you simply press V on PC, no matter if aimed down sights or not, or D-pad down on console, but it only works when aimed down sights. In the bottom right corner of the screen, you can then see which fire mode is enabled. Four bullets for automatic, three for burst and one for single fire. But in addition, there is a much easier way to tell the chosen fire mode and it's hidden within your crosshair. When switching fire mode, the crosshair changes the shape. A full crosshair indicates automatic fire, a dashed crosshair shows that you use burst fire and if the top line is missing, your weapon is set to single fire. This way you can always tell what kind of fire mode your weapon has or is set to. And that leads me to the next tip. You can not only switch fire modes for primary weapons, but also for your secondary weapons, at least for one of them, the G57 pistol. By default it is always set to single fire, but by switching the fire mode you can set it to burst, which makes the gun even better in close combat and as a last resort when running out of bullets with your primary weapon. The only disadvantage is that you have to switch the fire mode at the beginning of each match, as it is always set back to default after a round. Next up, just a quick hint to the deployable bipods and the underbarrel launchers. I still see a lot of players not knowing how to use them, so here's how it works. Both attachments can be unlocked for several weapons in the underbarrel slot. When you have one of the launchers equipped to your weapon, you can switch to it by pressing X on PC or D-pad down on console, but without aiming down sights. Same if you use an additional bipod for an AR for example. By pressing the aforementioned button, the bipod will be deployed, if you press it again, your soldier will fold it back. With a bipod, you will have significantly less recoil, so for some weapons they are definitely a good addition. The next tip is for the sniper and marksman rifles. By default, they are all equipped with scopes of different zoom variants. With the time, you will then unlock other scopes and optics, but what you should know when playing these rifles is that all optics with more than 4 times zoom will be seen by the enemy with the scope clint. So if you want to stay hidden as a sniper, you should try to avoid these scopes. Everything up to 4 times zoom is fine and won't clint at all, so the Raven 4 times is the last scope you could play. Everything above, the 6 times, 8 times and 10 times scopes will have this scope clint. Interestingly, the SWS-10, the first sniper rifle, still clints at 4 times zoom even though it shouldn't do. I'm pretty sure this is a bug and might get fixed at some point, but you should be aware of this when playing the rifle. Also, the scopes only clint when you are more than 20 meters away from your target. So on close quarters, none of the scopes will clint, but I'm pretty sure this is not the distance you will mostly act as a sniper. Just adding this as a fact here. And when talking about zooms and optics, there are also some pretty good variable and hybrid scopes available for almost all weapons that are pretty versatile and I would highly recommend to at least try them out. Especially on the assault rifles, they work pretty well since you constantly switch between close quarters and long range combat and the variable scopes are much easier to adapt to these situations than changing scopes with a plus menu. To toggle the two optics of the hybrid scopes or the variable zoom optics, aim down sights and then press F on PC or right stick on console. If you've changed the button mapping on console, you might have to press B or circle or whatever button your melee attack is bound to. Next up I want to give you some tips to the specialist Angel and his loadout crate. First of all, if you didn't know yet, you can call in the loadout crate by pressing 3 on PC or D-pad left on console to select Angel's resupply box and then press the aim down sights button to mark a spot for the loadout crate. When it has arrived, you and your teammates can change their loadouts on the map, but not only this. You can also fill up all of your ammo, grenades and explosives in one go. Just interact with the crate and then either select the loadout you already have or just cancel back out and your grenades and everything else will be resupplied. This also works for Angel's armor plates, cause when you have thrown a pack of them, there will be a cooldown before you can throw the next ones. When you go through the loadout crate and cancel out, you can use the plates again immediately. This works every few seconds as the crate's cooldown is just as long as the ones of a normal ammo crate, but with the difference that the loadout crate resupplies everything at once. And you can use the loadout crate several times, as long as it is on the map. This can make it much easier to deal with vehicles or fortified enemies, so when you play as Angel, be sure to call in a loadout crate at locations where your team can take advantage of them. Another thing Angel can do and that is not mentioned anywhere in the specialist's description is repairing or better healing the robot dog ranger. 
When Ranger is on the map, it will slowly take damage from bullets and explosives and will quickly be destroyed if you don't care about it. One thing you can do to repair the robot is by taking the repair tool with you and fix it this way. But you will have to be pretty close to it and also call it to a position so Ranger is not running around you. Much easier is it when using Angel's armor plates. Just throw them out from the resupply box like you throw them to your teammates to apply additional armor to them. With Ranger it works the same way. Throw the plates and it will heal up automatically over time. If you use the additional loadout crate tip I gave you before, you can keep the dog alive much longer. And this is not only working for your own ranger, but for every ranger your squad or team calls in. And one more tip if you play as Angel, you can now also self-apply armor by holding 3 on PC and D-pad left on console. This was added with the last update and works similar to the self-healing mechanic of Falk. So you won't have to throw the armor to the ground anymore. And compared to Falk's mechanic, the self-apply of the armor is not slower than when you just throw it to the ground. So it's definitely an advantage. The only negative point is that you will only fill up your armor and not your ammunition. When thrown to the ground, your soldier will pick up both armor and ammo. But if you only want to heal yourself up, self-applying the armor is definitely quicker. Another feature that was just added with the last update are markers that show you which one of your teammates can heal or resupply you. If you are wounded or low on ammo and you look around you, you will find squad and teammates with either a cross or a bullet icon above their heads. These players either use one of the support specialists or have a medic or ammo crate equipped. If you are lucky, they will heal or resupply you by themselves. If not, you can try to ask for their help with the Comoros. Just open it by holding Q on PC, RB on Xbox or R1 on PlayStation and choose the respective tile. Unfortunately, you cannot ask them directly by pinging them like it was in former Battlefield titles. You have to use the Comoros. But in addition, the other players can see that you need health or ammo as you will have a speech bubble above your head showing either a medic or a bullet icon. So if you are a player that can resupply or heal, look out for your teammates in need and drop your crates, plates or syringes for them. And at the end, two tips to vehicles. The first one is, do not use the carbon skin for your LATV4 truck. It might look cool and much better than the other ones, but this skin can make you get killed much faster than before. And that's because of the crates in the back, or better the ones that are not existing at the carbon skin. For all other skins, the view from the back to the driver and passenger seat is blocked with these crates, so you can't get shot on the back of your head. But with the carbon skin, there are no crates and your enemies can kill you and your passengers much easier. So as good as it might look, better not use it. And the last tip for today and also another feature that was just added with the last update, if you should get stuck with your vehicle, you can try to free it by poking it with your knife. This way the vehicle will slightly move and you might manage to save it for your team. I know that this was possible in former Battlefield titles already, so if you missed it in the first few weeks, it is in the game now. Might be just a side note for some players, but I know that there are situations where this can come in handy. And that's it for today. I hope you liked this short tips and tricks video to Battlefield 2042 and if you did, be sure to give it a thumb up and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more content like this. Until then, thanks for watching, I'm the Catwoman and you are awesome.